The big Olympic economic boost has failed to materialise, on the high street at least. People were apparently so absorbed by the sport, they had little interest in shopping. Retail sales in August were down 0.4% on the same month uh, last year. It's on a like-for-like -like basis. Even online sales growth slowed up, but at 4.8% on last year, the weakest growth in four years. Retailers could have done with a shot in the arm because we also learned today that a number of empty shops across Britain has risen to record levels again. 14.6% of high street shops, that's about one in seven, were empty in the first half of the year. The picture varies from region to region. One in three shops in Margate and Nottingham are vacant. London, the picture a little better, and Salisbury apparently had the lowest vacancy rate. The organisation which published this research says rents are falling, but a growing number of retailers are struggling. I think um, you can see over the recent uh, sort of months, you've seen Peacocks, you've seen Julian Grays, uh, and there are a number of also, not only those going out of business, are reducing store portfolios from, say, six or 700 to uh, around about 100 to 150, because that's all you need to do to cover the UK population. Joining me now, Steve Newbold, who's director of Autumn Fair International. Uh, Mr. Newbold, a very good afternoon uh, to you. Good afternoon. Uh, it's a pretty miserable time of things uh, for retailers, isn't it? Uh, what sense, what can you add to this debate? Well, it, well, you can't dispute it. It's a bit of a roller coaster ride out there at the moment and has been for most of the year. Um, what we've tried to do, I mean, we run the two largest trade events in the UK. Um, so we have over 60, 70,000 buyers coming to our events. Um, each year. So we're pretty well placed to sort of try and really monitor and check what the sentiment is going forwards, which I think is quite important to get into context when you hear the news which has come out this morning about the latest retail sales figures for August. Uh, and, and what is that context? Uh, what you're telling, you're saying is a little, little bit better than we're, we're making out, are you? Yeah, I mean, it's, more, it's much more optimistic. Um, so 86% of the people that we surveyed, and these are independent retailers, multiple retailers, department stores, even online retailers, um, are actually broadly optimistic and, you know, quite encouraged about sort of how they're going to trade through in the run up to Christmas and even going on towards 2013. So it's perhaps not quite as pessimistic um, as the numbers would have you believe when you look at it retrospectively. And what are your what information do you have about the Olympics? I mean, all the evidence seemed to be it was at best the damp squib. Well, I think perhaps not a great, a great surprise on the retail front. I mean, obviously, food and drink did pretty well. Um, we would fully expect, actually, there to be a, a, probably a bounce back, actually, a return to trading as we go forward to the months ahead for people who perhaps did stay at home or watch the Olympics or went away. Um, so I don't think it's to be unexpected. I mean, you look at other cities where they've run these events that, you know, the same thing has happened. Uh, but as I said, the most important thing is, is what are we seeing, you know, moving forwards? And there is a degree of optimism um, in the market from retailers that they're adapting to the situation on the high street. Um, and that they believe that actually they can actually equip quite well and even grow um, in the months ahead going forward. Goodness, there's some very optimistic people out there, especially when you consider that the high street seems to be emptying. Well, I, I mean, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not our word. This is actually coming from them. And these are people who know their customers pretty well. So, you know, these retailers are dealing with their customers all the time. Um, the, the other side to this, of course, you have to remember is that, you know, for many consumers, there's some fantastic offers out there you know, at point of retail at the moment as well. Um, and people are having to work harder and adapt to the current challenges in the marketplace. So, so the retailers which are on top of their game uh, will continue to do well and, and hopefully try and prosper as they move forward. What's your sense then? When you hear that one in seven shops in, on the UK high street is empty, uh, does that concern you or do you just see that as a reflection of the way things are? We're buying more stuff online, therefore it's inevitable there are going to be fewer shops. Well, I think, I mean, retailers are, I mean, most retailers are, are, are multi-channel channel retailing now anyway. So it's not just about bricks and mortar. They'll be selling online as well. You'll see that with independents, department stores, as well as the bigger high street sort of names. Um, I, I think the thing which is important to take from this is that what also came out in our research is there's a number of things, really, that um, the government in particular and, uh, and local boroughs can do and landlords can do to actually sort of try and support retailers. So things which came out quite clearly... Um, the fact that business rates, I mean, 72% of the people we surveyed were, were, were pretty clear that business rates are too high and perhaps unfair and are penalising them. But things like obvious things like car parking and uh, where councils can actually support people with lower car parking charges are obviously going to help to bring people back to the high street and to shopping centres. Okay. So Steve, things like that would be really important. Director of Autumn Fair International, thank you very much for that. It's not as bad as it looks. That's his view.